56 and you, news and information about WTVS. Here's Daryl Wood. WTVS takes you into the 90s with the best science and nature programming available. The Miracle Planet looks at the forces and events that have molded our world. TV journalist Bill Curtis hosts Monday nights at 8. And Smithsonian World returns with Zoo. Man and Animal, it's a complex and fascinating relationship. Tune in for this compelling presentation Wednesday, January 24th at 8. WTVS is looking for a few good men and women to join our auction go-getter team. Volunteer efforts form the backbone of our annual auction. Right now, we need people to spread the good word of public TV to businesses and bring in the merchandise that will make our April auction a success. Call Auction Central at 876-8350 and get in on early auction action. For 56 and You, I'm Daryl Wood. Here's a look at another brand new season of Austin City Limits. Saturday night at 10 on WTVS. I like to watch Channel 56 for Zoo because sometimes it, cause it makes me laugh. You're watching WTVS Channel 56 in Detroit. Hi, everybody. I'm Lanny Verdon, and welcome to this week's Outdoorsman Show. This week's show, we're going up to Emily City at the Marty High Memorial Big Buck Contest put on by Woods and Waters Newspaper. And you're going to be able to see some of the beautiful bucks that have been taken in the 1989 firearm deer season, as well as the bow season and the muzzleloader season. This is the only contest that includes everybody, from the handgun winners all the way to the bow hunters. So you at home, stay tuned. You're going to find out what big bucks are really all about right after this. Welcome, everybody, to this week's Outdoorsman Update. We've got a special section coming up for you, something a little bit different. Uh, all you people out there that are involved with the hunting and fishing, and you've got a VHS copy, send it into the Outdoorsman Show, because in some of our Outdoorsman Updates, we're going to put you on the Outdoorsman Show. All you have to do is send us a copy of your tape to the Outdoorsman Show, 3254 Avalon, that's Rochester Hills, Michigan, 48309. And if you'd like to have the tape returned to you, all you have to do is send a postage page envelope, and we'll return it to you. Also, some of the things that are coming up for the Outdoorsman Show that we're going to be involved in, we're going to be giving some seminars on deer hunting and fishing at the Pontiac Silverdome Boat and Sport Show coming up January 17th to the 21st. Make sure you get down there and visit us. Stop by the Outdoorsman Show booth. Who knows, we may put you on camera, and you can give us some of your comments on the Outdoorsman Show. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking with Tom Campbell and Glenn here from Michigan Big Game Hunters Association. Tom, I'd like to start off with you and explain a little bit about the... Uh, Marty Heim Memorial Big Buck Contest that you have here at Woods and Waters. Sure, Lanny. It started out as a local contest. Uh, Marty, who is a publisher here in town, owned the local paper, and uh, he passed away suddenly with a heart attack. And he was uh, just an avid outdoorsman, and he loved to fish and hunt. And uh, so we picked up with a local paper and uh, started a, a local contest in his name. And then uh, the same corporation that uh, owns the local paper came up with the Woods and Waters. And so with the Woods and Waters, we kind of went statewide with the contest. And, it's just a way of honoring Marty, who is a heck of an outdoorsman, and uh, it's uh, been tremendously successful. It's grown from, uh, oh, I think we had 25 entrants the first year to uh, over 120 this year. So. The crowd that we had show up here tonight, now I know a lot of the guys that are out there doing television shows have already had their big buck night. I thought a really pretty big of you guys from Woods and Waters putting on your big buck contest and, uh, and fun night way after all the big bucks are, are collected. At the end of the season, it's, uh, tonight is uh, January, geez, what time? Uh, 13th, there, there we go, I'll figure it out. January 13th, and most of the deer hunting season is over. In Michigan, it's definitely over. And by 
you guys putting on a contest there, it gave everybody a chance to be involved in it. Uh, matter of fact, Linda and I, both of you guys all wrote about me and made fun of me in the paper there. I appreciate it. That's all right. I still, I still got a nice eight point as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, that Linda did beat it. But anyways, Tom, I thought that was pretty big of you guys to make sure that everybody was included. And I think because you did, you did that, look at the attendance it had. You're definitely going to have to go to a bigger room next year. Uh, definitely, yeah. We had a tremendous turnout. Uh, we did move the contest this year to include the entire season. We just felt we were missing out. You know, you got two seasons of muzzleloader in December, and then you got the whole bow season. Even though uh, we didn't have a lot of bow entrants, we had some nice bucks. Uh, but the muzzleloader was taken the last day of the season. I scored 157. I, it may be one of the top muzzleloader uh, bucks taken all year. And yeah, it's true. A lot of people missed out on that buck, and it just it wasn't fair. So it's a little more work. You got to work through your holidays. You lose your Christmas and New Year's. But yeah, I think it's worth it. And it's fair to the outdoorsmen. And I think Marty would appreciate it, getting everybody a fair shot to come in here. Uh, we're not talking about a astronomical amount of uh, prize money and everything else. It's a lot of good fun, a lot of good home stories, and we're going to talk to a few of the people here shortly. Glenn, I'd like to talk to you from, Mich uh, from the Michigan Ga Big Game Hunters Association. Glenn, you're the president there. As far as the standpoint goes, how's the deer harvest looking this year as far as the big racks that are coming in? Well, they're shooting a lot of big deer in this state now. A lot of people don't believe that Michigan produces big deer, but looking around here tonight, boy, I'd be proud to shoot any one of these deer they brought in here tonight. Oh, you betcha, and I tell you what, How's your organization coming in? What's what's coming up here in 1990 and the, the new decade is and new decade as they say? Well, our organization is growing very fast. We're getting a lot of very important people in this organization. We formed a coalition to fight anti-hunters in this state, and we're having some problems now out here. As you can see or have read, that uh, in Milford they're trying to shut down hunting in Milford, and they are trying to shut it down in Howell and Brighton, and I believe they've already done it in St. Clair Shores. So and people have to get involved. They're going to have to get politically involved. The hunter's been known to be very apathetic, and they're going to have to change their views. They're going to have to go out and register to vote, and they're going to have to go out and vote and support the people that support them. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Mr. Blanchard has not done the things for the sportsman estate that goes for hunters, outdoors, fishermen, and what have you. Now, we formed a coalition to fight these anti-hunters. Right now, we had a, a meeting for about an hour and a half with uh, uh, John Engler. And John Engler, we, well, we had a talk with him, so we would support Mr. Engler if, one, he made Tom Washington lieutenant governor of the state, two, if he, if he separated the DNR, got the environmental thing away from fishing and hunting, and also if we, the sportsmen, had some say-so on who would be appointed to the NRC commission. Right now, there are people in that commission that are qualified to be in the, on the commission. And it's good information for you people at home. Uh, don't sit by the fireside and expect uh, Glenn and Tom and everybody to pull the, pull the load and work for you. Get a hold of your congressman and your, and your representative and let them know what your opinion is. Uh, they're elected to represent you, so if you don't contact them, you don't give your opinion, they're not going to know and they're going to vote their own views. But if, uh, if there's a voice out there, uh, you should be at, you're at home uh, doing the outdoors. So, guys, I appreciate it. Lanny, one more thing okay. I'd like to say. It is very important for the sportsmen to go out there and write these letters and to make these telephone calls. You cannot believe how important it is. A congressman, a senator, the mayor, the governor, it doesn't make any difference who it is. It's very important that they get involved. We cannot sit there and lay back because we're having problems right now. And these local meetings here now, each one of these hunter closures has a posted, by law, they're supposed to put them in the new, local newspapers and when they have these DNR meetings as far as hunter closures. This is your chance to get out there and to participate in these meetings and voice your opinion. If you'd like to continue hunting in the particular area that you're in, and if it's not that populated, and there are safe hunting practices, some areas that may not be able to hunt firearm anymore, you can still hunt with bow. So get a hold of these people, attend these meetings, and voice your opinion. Guys, I appreciate it. We're going to take a break here, and we'll be right back with more of the Mighty Heim Big Buck Contest Memorial. There he goes. Nice zoom in, perfect, yeah. Get kind of a little broader look at it. Oh, yeah. yeah good. Well camouflaged, well camouflaged. Those pine pine trees do a fine job for that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twelve, fifteen, twelve, 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 Yep. 
That's, uh, I'll tell you, I hope that, I hope that buck's still around. <laughs> oh, you got me. <laughs> nice close-up of uh, a little rub. You now it's a little out of focus here. But, uh, kind of get the idea here what it's all about. There's a little buck, but again, he's leaving his mark. Definitely a nice rub right here. Kind of low to the ground, as we can see. Probably only about uh, two to three feet off the ground. But uh, he really went around the tree pretty good. You can see all the little pine bristles that he's rubbed off. Welcome back, everybody. We figured in this segment of our show and the next one here, we talked to some of the people that were successful here and participated in the Marty High Memorial Big Buck Contest that Woods and Waters put on here. And our first gentleman here, I'm going to let him introduce himself. And uh, where are you from, sir? I'm from Armada, Michigan, sir. My name is Gary Parker. Gary, tell us a little bit about this deer that you uh, collected this year. Well, it was the second day of season. It was blowing pretty hard winds, uh, timber was a-rocking, uh, rocks on the ground, and the roots were all together, and uh, it's been still hunting about five and a half to six hours, sir, and slipped around a rock cliff and kind of looked over, and I seen an eye looking at me, and I don't know how I seen it standing, uh, and a bunch of cedars leaned up against a rock cliff, and uh, took about a four-inch opening into him, and uh, just fortunate enough to get a shot into him, I hit him in the neck, and he flipped over. We spent three days going into the swamp to get him out. We had nine flat tires on a three-wheeler and one on a four-before truck, and uh, I think we cut enough toothpicks for the whole state of Michigan <laughs> down in there, but we finally got him out on the third day. Uh, this was kind of later in the season, though, after everybody was done hunting. Where did you get him at? I got him in Dela County, sir. If I was to give the whereabouts the exact spot, <laughs> I won't be allowed to be back there anymore, sir. <laughs> well, that's great. Tom's been trying to pry and buy and uh, everything else, all these spots for people who have been good. We know you're not going to give away your prime hunting spot, and after collecting a buck of this nature here, I don't, I don't believe I would either. What did this one score out? Do you remember? It's uh, 145, sir. 145, and an excellent trophy. And uh, I tell you what, gang, if I'd have got one that big, I'd have been standing here, but I didn't either. So, hey, thanks a lot, and we appreciate you telling your story. Come on back, and we appreciate it. Who's our next one here? Now, this guy here, I know, he said he got an Oakland County, but I know, yeah, we've seen this guy's truck after Linda measured her deer one day. We are you going to tell us where he got it, but what's your name and where are you from, and tell us about this deer. Uh, my name's Ron Nickel, and I'm from Washington, and I shot the deer in Oakland County. It was on the 22nd of November, and I was hunting with my father, and we were sitting. It was a very sunny morning. About 8.30, I decided to get up because I was freezing. And <laughs> well, it was cold out there, wasn't it? It was freezing cold. Anyways, we were planned to walk around 8.30. We were going to start moving some deer, and I got up and immediately jumped another buck. It was a nice eight point, and I was, I seen him standing on a ridge across this uh, ravine. And the sun was shining in his eyes, so I figured I had a pretty good chance to get up to him. And I was crawling on my hands and knees for about 50 yards, trying to get a spot to shoot through the tops of the trees that were in the bottom of the ravine. And in, I thought I'd found that spot, and this deer, I got him in my scope, and he turns around and looks, and this one started charging him. <laughs> so they were, they were ready to do battle over yeah, some territory. There's a, lot, there's a lot of bucks in the area, a lot of bucks. Anyways, I got him in my crosshairs and shot twice. Second shot, I got him, dropped him. How did, how did you get the gun steady enough after after seeing him in the beginning to, to shoot the thing? It happened so fast. It Luckily for me, it happened that fast that I didn't have time to get nervous. Because <laughs> well, if I'd have seen the rack at first, man, I think I'd have been in serious trouble. I knew as soon as I saw the deer from behind that he was a lot bigger than the one I was stalking, so I immediately switched deer. That's a super, super tail town. I tell you what, you keep having this contest. These deer keep getting bigger, I tell you. You're definitely going to have to have a bigger room just for the participants next year. Yes. Thanks a lot, Guy. I appreciate it. We'll be coming out much. and uh, sharing your story with us, and uh, we'll be following your van next year. <laughs> tell you where you're at. Hey, who's this next fellow we got coming out here? Got another fellow coming over here where he got his deer at. Now, Tom, tell us a little bit about this. Now, this is a non-typical? No, this is this isn't a score typical. This is a UP buck. Uh, Dan Haywald from uh, Allington got. Okay. And, uh, 
Uh, this is a, a super buck from the UP, eh? Yeah. Tell us a little bit, of Dan, about this deer. Well, uh, been hunting the same the same seat there for all oh, probably the last six seven years. And this is the second one we put in the record books off that seat. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, well, I, the biggest one up to this one is 11 point I got off of it. And my dad missed oh probably a 12 you know 12 14 just big rack. Hard what? to tell. And, what day did you get this deer? I got this on the opener. Uh, we had about five inches of snow, and uh, the visibility was really cut down. Uh, every little twig, you know, had snow stacked up on it. And uh, it was about 10 o'clock, and, you know, I, I tried to grunt call, but I can't say that the grunt really got him in. Uh, I, I wasn't seeing anything. It's the only deer I seen opening day was this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I give him a grunt around, oh, probably 9, 30, quarter to 10. And nothing happened, so then I waited till about 10:30. I give another grunt, and about 20 minutes after that second grunt, mm -hmm. he just come out from behind me, from behind some pines. And I should have backtracked him, you know, to check just to see if he was bedded down or if he changed directions if that call brought him in. But I don't know. You know, yeah. uh, you know I tell you what, Linda called in a nice batch of uh, deer this year. Her 10 point that she took that we aired last week on the show, she brought in three bucks off her grunt call within about seven minutes. So I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'd have a little more confidence in it than you do in well, a grunt call. Cause they, I, 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 they were sure though. I wish, like I said, I wish I would have backtracked him just to see where he come from. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what turned him or brought him in or if he was just looking for a doe, you know. Uh, he, he was definitely on the move, though. I mean, he, he come in, he had his head down, and he was just, you know, on, on the move, looking for something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he, he can tell he's still pretty geeked up about this. I don't blame you, buddy. I tell you what, if I had that, one, that big, I'd be geeked up for the next year or two. I tell you. I tell you what, we're going to take a break here, Dan and uh, Tom. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk to some more of the uh, participants of the Marty Heim Memorial Big Buck Contest right after this. Just little old me. Just little old you? Oh, that's good. And a nice shot of... Going to days blind here, and uh, we have to overcome some obstacles as we're walking. And one of them is those pesky beavers. Well, as you can see, what they did, they, as beavers usually do, made a nice little dam. And a beauty it is. Every now and then we we run across them, and they let us know that uh, we're in the wrong territory. But as we're coming up, we can see here that this stuff is pretty doggone nasty. It's gotten to a point now where it's almost <laughs> getting hard to cross. Falling off this log, slipping into that deep, quickly running stream, but what we hunters don't go through to get a deer. Well, here goes nothing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Victory! That's the tree line there that I got my four point. Hey, Ron? Yeah, it was a nice one. It was under this tree. Right here? Yeah. All right there. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking with some some of the winners of the Marty Heim Memorial Big Buck Contest here that Woods and Waters is sponsored. And Tom, tell us a little bit about uh, what what are some of the things that are coming up here for Woods and Waters. I know we got some more people here. We got Tim here. He's the first place in the firearms division, correct? Yes. Okay. And we're going to talk to Tim here, but I want to talk to you a little bit, Tom, about what's coming up for Woods and Waters newspaper and how can I get a hold of you? Well, uh, Lanny, right now uh, we're entering the, uh, obviously there's a lot of winter shows and we'll try to be attending as many of those as possible so people feel free to stop by and talk to us at our booth. Um, and uh, we are right now in a tremendous growth spurt. We're uh, just, we're growing like crazy. There's still a few areas of the state we'd like to cover yet with our paper, but uh, we are definitely a Mich Michigan paper for the outdoorsmen in Michigan and we like to write about Michigan stuff. And uh, if anybody's interested in uh, subscribing or any other information, they can reach us at area code 313-724-0254. That's super. And I'll tell you what, I recommend that you get a 
copy of the newspaper because of the fact there's not too many to cover the uh, local information that's going on in the outdoors from all seasons, not just fishing, but uh, fishing, hunting, trapping, ca camping, you name it. Uh, they do do it, and I appreciate it as far as, as just as a reader for myself. By the way, I had to say that because he sends me a paper once a month. He sends it actually, but he sends it to Linda. He doesn't send it to me. So anyway, but uh, Tim, tell us a little bit about your deer. Now you finished first place in the firearms division this year. Yes. Uh, okay, I got the eight point on Friday, November 17th. Okay, and next morning, a buddy of mine we switched seats there. And yeah, now there's a whole big story. I done read part of the story. I, I'm gonna pull it out of him. He ain't gonna. Uh, now tell us about how it started out. Now from the from the get go, Jim. Well.